All right, I'm back once again with some more TBRs and wrap-ups and all that good jazz. Good jazz, that's that's just what I'm saying today. Um, I will get back to doing some book reviews and probably series reviews, why you should read, things like that. Um, I'm actually going to make a shift, I believe, for how I approach reviews on the channel because I know it's been a while since I've done any. What I used to do was as soon as I would wrap up a book, I would film a review. And then I kind of got out of habit of doing that. I was reading a lot of sequels. I didn't feel like doing a lot of uh, follow-up reviews for that. So I think moving forward, I'm generally going to do the first book of a series and then probably a series wrap-up rather than each individual book. Um, and I've just been kind of slacking recently <laughs> for the last month and a half or so between burnout on making content, being sick, still I even sound sick now. Uh, my entire family had ear infections and bronchitis and all kinds of crap for the last couple of months. Uh, it's just been a lot. And then job interviews, all that good stuff. So it was just a lot of busy time getting getting my way back into this. I know I'm sounding like a broken record. I think I've said some of this before where I was trying to get back into making videos and just things keep going sideways, but I will get back to at least one video per week. Uh, there are plenty of reviews upcoming and I haven't been completely absent. I was on uh, Jimmy's channel uh, a week and a half ago for Chatting With Nuts. So I'll link that down below. Always a good time chatting with him and his nuts. Hey, phrasing! And uh, then I also was on Jonathan's channel. Uh, that's Words in Time. That'll be linked down below as well. Just talking about, you know, our favorite fantasy and sci-fi book of each decade from the 70s to the 2010s. So definitely check that out uh, and give him a look. His channel is great as well. But what I am here to talk about today, and I'm trying and my mic is over here. So we're going to see how this works. Maybe it'll uh, be terrible and my sound will just be awful. We'll find out. Today, I'm going to talk about what I finished reading in the month of September and then following up in a few days you will see my october tbr i have a lot of buddy reads coming up so there's going to be a lot of collaborations things like that so at least once a month there's going to be collabs i'm already reading through full metal alchemist with elliot brooks jess owens and patrick leo so we'll have some chats coming up for that soon and a live show in the next couple of months i'm reading an awful lot of stuff with liana that you'll see upcoming as well possibly jimmy I'm joining his read along next month. I'll talk about that in the next video. So there's a lot of collaboration stuff coming up. Keep an eye out for that. But here's what I read in September. Okay, so September, Full Metal Alchemist. Ugh. Volumes one through six. So we're reading six a month, and then we're going to do a live show on Elliot Brooks' channel. There's going to be some reading sprints as well on her Patreon. So check that out if you have access to that. Um, I love Full Metal Alchemist, both the anime and now reading the manga. I had never actually read them before, which is refreshing getting back into the series just because I loved the anime so much years and years and years ago when I read it. And of course, the novelization, you know, the, the manga is fantastic. The, the art style is great, matches basically identical to what the anime is. The, the comedy, the emotional bits to this, the, the dialogue and interactions between characters, it's fantastic. It's some of the best stuff that I've read uh, just in, in general, but especially when it comes to manga or watching anime. It's so well done. It's incredibly violent and dark at times, and it's also super emotional and pulls at your heartstrings. There's some serious stuff in these books in between all the fantastic comedy that just really uh, gets to you sometimes. And it's, it's just so well done. I, I love everything about FMA. And I can't wait to talk about it with, with everybody in the group that's that's reading along and chatting about this. I'm super excited. I will probably do some kind of manga review for these. I, I'm not going to do every volume. I'll probably do like a series or like a why you should read Full Metal Alchemist at some point. I don't believe that it's... I don't think I'm going to do like individual volumes or arcs because it's not... From what I understand, compared to other manga, it's not set up in, in arcs where you could really break it down. It's kind of like one story that's told over these 18 volumes. And I'm sure there's a way to break ways to break it up, but it's not like I could review volume one and have it make any sense because the story just directly continues in volume two. It's not like there's a completed arc. So we'll figure it out. I'm going to do something about it. I know YouTube's a little iffy with showing off uh, clips from anime or potentially even manga. So I don't know what what are, what is or is not uh, 
okay as far as copyright strike is concerned. So I'll have to look into that. But I do want to cover it on the channel. It's it's great, and I think everybody that is considering reading manga or checking out an anime, Full Metal is kind of hard to go wrong with. Next up, I read The Magic Fix by Mark Montanaro. There's okay, glare. Uh, so this was a self-published book that I received. Sometime last year, I believe, uh, I, I continue to slack on reading these self-pub books that I've been sent. I have an entire shelf dedicated to self-published uh, works. There's a lot of them. Uh, but I am trying to get back into reading at least one like every two months or so. This one started out incredibly promising. I loved his comedy and his wit. Just what he wrote about himself as an author and the introduction chapters was fantastic. I was getting a lot of like Monty Python feels, uh, Pratchett feels, everything was working for me, and then it kind of petered out. Uh, it didn't really hold my attention for the rest of the novel, unfortunately. Ultimately, what it focused on and the storyline I thought was kind of a fun idea, but it didn't captivate me in the way that I thought it would based on those first few pages. I mean, I was showing screenshots in my Discord. I was like, dude, this, this guy's hilarious. I love this writing. And it just kind of fizzled out a little bit as it went. So it wasn't one of some a bad book by any means. Uh, it was pretty funny, um, especially up front. But ultimately, like I don't, I don't think it's that memorable. Uh, it was just okay. It wasn't bad. It wasn't great. I, I think as like a, a first book of his, and I don't know if he's written anything since then. I'd say it was a very well done uh, first book, but it, it does have some 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 issues there wasn't it wasn't like one of those self-published novels where you run into a ton of like grammar issues and things like that where i just put the book down immediately uh so it was pretty well written i just i think there i just needed some more that's all if that makes any sense i need a little bit more out of it all right went through the keyhole i'm actually still in process of reading this um it's kind of an in-between book so i don't need to spend a whole lot of time on it but i love the dark tower Everything about it, I have not really anything negative to say about it, other than like Stephen King does weird sex things in his books, and it's just like there's some goofy shit that King does in his books that is always just like, oh yeah, okay, there it is. Um, but I love The Dark Tower. I think it's fantastic. I have yet to read a King book that I don't like, even with the weird things that pop up every once in a while or minor criticisms that I have. But I love the writing. I love the world building and the atmosphere of this. The complete insanity that is The Dark Tower how he balances these different like timelines and uh almost like multiverse kind of feeling to this it's just it's super cool if you know what the dark tower is about you kind of get what i'm what i'm saying i'm not trying to spoil anything but it's uh it's it's really well done and i still four and a half books in have no idea what is gonna happen in the series don't know not a clue but i'm excited to get there and last but certainly not least because this is one of the best Books that I've read all year, and one of the best series that I've read in a while, uh, Jade Legacy by Fonda Lee. So I wrapped up the Greenbone Saga. Holy shit, this series kicks all kinds of ass. Uh, I didn't expect going into it to actually enjoy it as much as I did, simply because the the style of urban fantasy, sort of mafia, godfather-esque uh, aesthetic and feel to this doesn't normally appeal to me, just in general, whether it be watching something like The Sopranos or reading about you know fantasy sopranos uh but it was so well done and i love her writing i love the dialogue and the characters throughout the entire series uh fonda lee uh tackles so many uh very like sensitive and serious topics and does it with grace and poise she's got to be the best when it comes to lgbt characters she's honestly one of the best that i've read that handles time jumps uh incredibly well i mean the series spans decades you have you know grandparents down to grandchildren that grow up throughout these these novels and this war that lasts decades between you know these clans and this fighting for jade and and power and supremacy and it's handled so well it never feels jarring when there's a time jump you kind of grow with these characters from childhood to adulthood a lot of them obviously not everyone makes it along the way you do lose folks here and there and just everything is just so well done. The the politics around the world, the way that these clans manipulate governments and trade agreements and everything to do with, you know, power consolidation, the the surprises, the twists, the turns, everything about these novels was fantastic. Uh, I fully believe that it lives up to the hype. Everybody talks about Greenbone Saga. It is that good, I think. It's, it's awesome. 
Um, I have nothing but high praise for it. I am going to do a series review for Greenbone Saga upcoming, so keep an eye out for that. That'll come up in the next couple of weeks for sure. Um, yeah, I recommend this to everybody. If you are a fan of any kind of like low, f I'll call it low fantasy, urban fantasy, it's very heavily character focused, and obviously there is an overarching plot and war that it centers around, but there's not like a ton of magic. The way that Jade is incorporated into every aspect of this world is fantastic. Um, nothing but praise for these books, man. They're great. Hey, so somehow I forgot that I also read The Warrior by Stephen Arian, which is right here. This is the proof copy, but nevertheless, I read this and I enjoyed it quite a bit. I don't think it was quite as good as The Coward. Uh, I really liked that book one, but it was a good follow-up. I, I didn't love everything about where the story went or what it chose to focus on, and some of the, the character focus um, outside of Kel wasn't the most interesting to me, but overall, a, a good follow-up and conclusion. Ultimately satisfied with the ending, I just think book one was better. But that does it for my September TBR. There's a little bit of rambling in there as well about other things happening on the channel and channels that I've been, you know, appearing on for collaboration stuff. But definitely keep an eye out for some series reviews upcoming. I'll have my October TBR out in the next couple of days as well. And until next time, everybody.